With our linear programming product mix problem set up successfully in Excel, it's time to solve it. So let's pull up our solver. And you'll find your solver in your data tab. And there we have it towards the end, in analysis part, you'll have solver. Now remember, we have talked about this before. A linear programming problem have three components. The objective function, the constraints, and we also want to tell Excel that what are the changing variable cells, or uh, in other words, what are the decision variables. Okay. So let's start with our objective function. So the first thing uh, we need to do is tell Excel where is our objective function. Remember, we are representing our objective function with green color cell. So over here, we are going to give a cell reference to our objective function cell, which is green, which is right here cell D3. Now, along with that, we also have to tell Excel what are we interested in doing to our objective function. Now, to do that, we have to have our understanding of our problem. And in this particular product mix problem, our overall objective was to maximize profit where the profit is contained in our objective function. So we are going to select max, uh, which will tell Excel that we want to maximize the value in our green cell, which is the objective function. Now, this next thing we need to give is the decision variables, or the changing variables, which are we coded as yellow cells. So let's give reference to our yellow cells. Now, what is this telling Excel? This is telling Excel that these are the cells that you're supposed to fill out that will maximize the green cell, which is the objective function. In other words, Excel will determine how many normal lawnmowers and racing lawnmowers we have to make in order to maximize our profit, which is the green cell. Now, we cannot have unlimited profits there because we have limited number of resources which are set up in our constraints area. So the third thing we're going to set up is uh, what are our constraints. Now let's get started with adding our constraints. So once we click Add, we're going to have this little window right here. So this window is a true representation of how we understand constraints. The left-hand side of the constraints are labeled as cell reference in Excel, and the right-hand side is labeled as constraint. So the left-hand side, if you remember, we coded them as blue. So we're going to say, uh, for engines, the left-hand side blue is cell reference D4. I'm going to click on that. Now, we cannot use more than 75 engines to produce all lawnmowers. So the constraints that we're going to put or the logic we're going to put here, our logic operator we're going to put here as would be less than equal to. This is telling Excel that no matter how many lawnmowers we will end up producing, they cannot exceed the right hand side, which is 75. And this is the actual constraint. And I'm going to put a cell reference to that constraint, uh, uh, engine constraint in my constraint cell. Okay, I'm going to click Add. So that is entered. Now we're going to do the same for labor. So the left-hand side of labor should be less than or equal to the right-hand side, which is 2,000 labor hours, add. And the last one, tubing, the amount of tubing we'll end up using should be less than or equal to constraint, 3,000 feet of um, tubing. Let's click add, click OK. And there we have it. Our objective function is set. We want to maximize our objective function by changing our decision variable cells, which are the yellow cells, and we have three constraints. Now, before we solve it, we have to make sure of two things. The first thing that this option, make unconstrained variable non-negative, make sure to check it because we don't want our yellow cells to be negative numbers. We can't have negative number of products produced. Also, our solving method is always going to be simplex LP. Okay, so you have to make a conscious effort to actually change this before you run uh, the problem. Run this problem. So once you have checked everything, parameters are in place. This option is uh, checked, and our solving method is simplex. Let's solve it. And as soon as you're going to solve it, it's going to ask for you want to keep the solver solution. We're going to say yes, and in reports we are interested in saving the sensitivity report. So make sure you've highlighted that, click OK, 
And there you have it. So apparently, we can, given the number of resources and the profits for each type of lawnmower, uh, Excel is suggesting us to make 25 normal lawnmowers and 50 racing lawnmowers to maximize a profit, which is going to reach $55,000, which is not a bad profit. And apparently, we are using all our engines and all our labor hours, but we are using less tubing than we actually have. Um, in this particular problem. Uh, the second thing that we saved was sensitivity report right here. Uh, we're going to talk about it in class, but for now make sure whenever you are solving a product mix problem, you save the sensitivity report.